Uh, moving along. So today we want to work on hair, ears, and your neck. Uh, and so before I do that, I'm actually just going to go in and kind of erase out um, some areas that are craftsmanship issues. So I'm just going to go around and just erase um, the stray marks and lines that I have around here. And I would encourage you to do that too before you move forward. Okay, so for hair, you want to follow uh, the direction that your hair is growing in and laying in. Uh, you want to match the value of the hair to, you know, the value of your hair. So if you have darker hair, you want to make sure that you're using that 6B to really kind of get in there um, and create that darker value. And so that's what I would suggest first is just kind of going and making sure that the value of your hair uh, makes sense. Okay, and so I'm going to apply my 6B. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit more detail to my hairline uh, before I kind of move on to the next step with the hair. Okay, so when you're making the value appropriate, you want to make sure that you're applying any graphite in the direction that the hair is growing in and with the form. That's really, really important. Okay, and so now I'm going to go in closer to the hairline and just add um, some more uh, defined strokes of texture of where the hair is kind of growing out of there. Okay, so depending on your hairstyle, you may or may not take this approach. Um, you may just have like bangs that kind of come down and so working with um, textures at the hairline isn't going to be something that you need to do. Um, instead, you're just going to kind of reverse the process that I'm doing, kind of coming downward. Uh, and so now that I have that, I want to go in and I want to blend this a little bit. And then I'm also going to pull out some highlights uh, from there and then go back in and add some more texture as well. Okay, and so I go back, I blend with the paper towel to kind of soften the hair. Um, I'm just lightly blending, so that way some of the textures that I put in with the graphite are still stay there. Uh, and then I'm going to go in and kind of erase some textures as well. So if your hair is very shiny, uh, you can go in and you can kind of erase individual kind of like reflective areas in your hair and then kind of work around those uh, with a pencil again with more like defined textures uh, and so just kind of working back and forth between your pencil and your eraser to create the texture over top of that blended base uh, is really going to help you to quickly map out uh, the texture that you have in your hair uh, and so different different hair has different textures so use mark making that makes sense for your hair texture it might be more um scumbly it might be more uh straight it's really like needs to be tailored to your hair type okay so i did want to do a quick section of curly hair for you um to give you an idea of how to go about that for those of you that have um different hair textures so i just kind of drew a couple locks of my actual hair um, that is uh, more like wavy curly uh, when it's down. So I am just kind of looking at the individual chunks of curls, okay? Um, and I'm gonna put those in and just block in value really, really quickly with my 6B. And so after I block it in, I'm gonna blend it and then I'll explain how to kind of add uh, more value where the curls kind of dip in and are more in shadow and then pull out highlights in areas where the curls um, kind of pop out and reflect more light. Uh, you might have like a uh, hair that has like just a, a completely different texture to it than what I'm showing. Um, and so I would just say like, you know, uh, try experimenting with different mark making uh, to find out what fits for you. If your hair is lighter, you might just use lighter pencils and lighter pressure for this. So you might not use your 6B, you might use something more like your 2B or your HB or even your 2H. Okay, so now that this is blocked in and uh, blended, I'm going to go back in with my 6B because my hair is darker. And I'm just going to look where the curls kind of come out from under each other. Um, and I'm going to just start to block in kind of like the darker values in them that way okay now where it starts to come out um, towards where like light is reflecting on a curl I'm gonna feather those strokes out so I'm gonna leave them kind of liney like that um, to just kind of show the way that hair texture reflects light and I'm just drawing kind of a couple locks And so I would encourage you to work on like more detailed sections like this of your hair 
uh, in places that are like closer framing your face. Uh, the hair that's kind of like further back in your portrait I think could be like just softer and less detailed and that would be fine. Um, especially for our limited time in this project but also to kind of show like illusion of depth kind of within your portrait and to create emphasis on kind of the main facial features and framing them. Okay so now I'm going to pull out those darker values from uh, the shadowy areas into the middle values, erase out the highlight areas, and then rework the texture over top with other pencils. Okay, and so you can see kind of the light bouncing off of the hair where it's shinier, um, the shadow where the hair kind of changes direction and form, um, and then that feathering texture overlapped in there with um, pencil strokes after it's been blended with a base layer. Um, I erased out some highlights with my, um, with my eraser as well on those areas. After they're erased out, you might have to kind of rework the texture uh, with a lighter grade pencil like your HB or your 2H or your 6H even if you have really light hair. Um, and then um, you can also kind of blend areas if it feels like too textured. But that's a quicker way to do it than drawing every single little individual strand. Always um, add a base layer value, blend it, and then go over with textures afterwards. Okay, ears. So I wouldn't get too, too terribly detailed with ears, but I would look to kind of block in some like lights and shadows. So I had to draw, I accidentally <laughs> erased the top part of this ear, so I had to like draw it back in quick. Um, and so now I'm just looking to block in um, like shadows and highlights. Um, I actually can't really see a whole lot of detail on this ear um, because it's more in shadow. Um, but that's okay. And so I'm just going to go in and just kind of put in, um, I kind of show like the inside of this part of the lobe here. And then there's a shadow that comes in down here that I'm going to block in. Um, but I keep everything very soft. I don't make like super sharp edges to shadows or highlights um, because I want it to kind of be softer and like a background feature. Um, because they are back further on my head. This is the stuff that's closer. You know, my eyes are really what I choose for the focal point of a portrait. And that's pretty typical. Most artists, portraiture artists, do um, focus on the eyes. Um, and so uh, we don't want to take too much attention away from there. But just kind of pulling out these little bits of anatomy where the lobes kind of go in and have shadows versus coming out and having some lighter values. I would also kind of on the bottom of the lobe where it's like more round down here, add a little bit of a shift in value there. And then you obviously want to have contrast in the value of the ear versus the value that's on the cheek. So my cheek has some reflected light in there. And so it is automatically um, brighter than the ear here but I just want to make sure that the value, there's some contrast between here and here to delineate those two forms from each other. Okay, applying the same approach to the other ear. This ear is going to be lighter in value because it's reflecting more of the light source, but same approach as the other ear. Okay, so my neck is going to be very similar to how I approach the face. I want to make sure that I'm starting to add a thin layer of graphite kind of all throughout the neck. Um, value wise, I want to make sure that the neck is like a shade darker um, in value than the face is, at least like these areas. I want to make sure that it has less contrast and is overall like a little bit um, darker. Uh, so that way it sits back and the face pops forward. And so the first thing I want to do is make sure that there is some good contrast between um, the face and the neck by kind of going in. I'm going in with my 6B here and as I'm adding that value over top, I just want to be mindful of any detail that I see in the neck that I want to add with my 6B. I also want to make sure that this doesn't end up looking like an outline. I want to make sure that that has some areas where it transitions into the neck, okay? Not that I just created this like darker layer here that then um, looks like an outline. That's really, really important. I see because my light source is coming from over here in my neck, I see a cast shadow that comes and wraps around 
uh, here. And so I want to make sure that I am showing that as well to stay consistent with the light source that is illuminating my face in my portrait. Okay, so you just want to make sure that your value wraps around the form, that you're changing the direction of your pencil strokes to make sense for the curvature of your neck and kind of the different parts of like the tendons and bones that are in there. Uh, and you want to just make sure that you're um, being mindful of your pressure. So also make sure that you add any detail that you need to to the fabric of your clothing, uh, the little bit that you see in your portrait, reinforce shadows, uh, make sure that you have textures drawn appropriately, uh, blend as needed, pull out textures as needed. Okay, and then to wrap everything up, I would just go around with an eraser and just kind of make sure that you erase any straight pencil lines, make sure that you have a nice sharp edge on everything. Uh, if there's anything stray and unusual going on in your portrait to revise that as you need to um, and just kind of tidy things up and clean up your craftsmanship. If you find that you need help with anything in particular unique to your portrait, to your features, you should reach out to me. Um, if you'd like to, you could certainly add a value to the negative space. It doesn't need to stay white. So if you have a lot of smudgy things going on in there that you want to um, blend into a background value, I think that that's a fine way to resolve that. Um, it's probably something I would have you do if we were in school. Um, you just want to make sure that you pick out a value um, that contrasts with the rest of the portrait. So yeah, just check over your craftsmanship, tidy things up, make sure that there's proper contrasting values, that there's a full range of value from light to dark throughout your portrait, uh, and that forms are kind of popping against each other. Uh, look over the grading rubric and reach out if you need help with anything specific to your portrait. I'm happy to help in any way I can.